Good afternoon. I welcome you all for week 6, the second lecture on fluid dynamics and turbo machines. In the last class, we talked about the turbo machine and the different velocities that we come across, namely the absolute velocity, the relative velocity and the blade peripheral speed. So, in this class, we will talk about Euler's energy equation or how the energy transfer takes place. I use the usual control volume approach, which means we will talk about the blades. By blades, I mean the impeller blades or the rotating blades or rotor, which is responsible for the energy transfer. We will construct a control volume around all the blade passages. Then we will consider the mass flow rate entering and leaving the control volume, which is given by m dot equal to rho v dot. It is assumed that velocity c is uniform from blade to blade, that is along the circumferential direction and also from shroud to shroud. If you remember, in the last class, we talked about the vein congruent flow, which means the flow is identical in all vanes, which also means there is a flow uniformity as I showed you in the last class from the blade to the blade. Further, we are going to talk about the flow is uniform and the identical from shroud to the shroud. The principle we are going to apply is conservation of angular momentum and we all know that rate of change of angular momentum is equal to applied torque. In fact, it is at this point it is worth remembering that Dr. Shamit Bakshi in the first half of the course when he talked about fluid dynamics, he had applied the same principle of conservation of angular momentum to derive Euler's energy equation or energy transfer equation of a turbo machine. We are going to do it, the same expression we will get, but in a slightly different way. So, let us look at it. In the last class, we have given this description, this is a end to end or blade view and we are talking about the meridional views, we are uh, say let us say it is a pump, the fluid comes from the lower radius and goes out of the impeller at a higher radius as shown by the arrows. What we do is we construct a control volume all around the blades. This dotted line which is shown clearly here is actually my control surface and it is shown in both the views. So, what is encompassed in all the blades is the control volume. The fluid enters the control volume at the radius 1 and leaves at radius 2. So, we construct the velocity triangles assuming of course, the vane congruent flow and hence you can see that relative velocity is tangential at the inlet and also leaving the blade tangentially. And we have given the names as C 1, W 1 and U 1 and C 2, W 2 and U 2 just like we have done in the last class. So, this is the control volume, uh, we are talking about the mass flow rate of m dot, which enters these blade passages and leaves. In the process, there is an energy transfer. So, we take this diagram to the next slide and we talk about the conservation of angular momentum. In order to get the angular momentum, we need to extend C 1 and we drop a perpendicular such that the length is given by L 1. Of course, the inner diameter is d 1 or radius is r 1 as shown and the c 2 will come corresponding to uh, lengths will be l 2 and r 2. So, if I take this now all the lengths and the velocity vectors have been marked, we can find out that the torque t is given by m dot multiplied by c 2 l 2 minus c 1 l 1, where we can say that L i that is L 1 equal to R 1 cos alpha 1 and L 2 equal to R 2 cos alpha 2. So, in short we have written it as L i is equal to R i cos alpha i. Let us substitute this expression for L i in the torque and what do we get? We get that torque is equal to m dot C 2 R 2 cos alpha 2 minus C 1 R 1 cos alpha 1 which will give me m dot r 2 c u 2 minus r 1 c u 1 or in other notation we can say that m dot multiplied by r 2 c 2 u minus r 1 c 1 u. 
And then when we are talking about uh, energy transfer, we have to also keep in mind that this is an idealized case, hence there is no friction. So, we can say that P B L infinity, P here stands for power, B L for the blade that is the power transferred by the blade and infinity is an indication of the vein congruent flow, the idealized flow condition we have discussed earlier. So, P B L infinity is the idealized power transfer which is omega t which will be equal to m dot omega times the torque already we have found out and that is R 2 C u 2 minus R 1 C u 1 which will be given as m dot u 2 C u 2 minus u 1 C u 1. And we can say that the blade specific work W B L infinity here again the B L infinity I want to remind you refers to the blade and infinity refers to when congruent flow. Actually, you can keep this in mind in a similar way like we have talked about earlier that when congruent flow takes place when there are infinite number of blades. So, this is an idealized condition as you can appreciate. So, W B L infinity is corresponding to the blade when congruent flow or the idealized case or the case of infinite number of blades and that is given as u 2 C u 2 minus u 1 C u 1. This is known as Euler's energy equation often called Euler's turbine equation and this is exactly the same relationship if you recollect was obtained earlier by Dr. Bakshi in the fluid dynamics lecture. So, now we will discuss a few aspects of this Euler's energy equation to get a better appreciation of Euler's energy equation. The first point is the specific work or to be more precise the blade specific work is independent of the density of the fluid. So, for a given impeller running at a given speed the specific work will be the same for gas or liquid. Of course, we are taking an idealized world that viscosity effects are neglected. Second non uniform velocities are seen at the exit end even though the flow may be uniform at the inlet which we are not considering here. We will talk about the deviations from the Van Gogh flow in the next class. And we can talk about the special cases. The first special case comes from the axial flow machines. In case of axial flow machines u 1 equal to u 2 and we will get that W B L infinity is u times C u 2 minus C u 1 where u is nothing but u 1 equal to u 2. And if in particular we take C u 1 equal to 0 and beta 2 equal to 90 degree then we can get the W B L infinity is u 2 C u 2 which is equal to u 2 square. So, first let us again this recollect what we have talked about the implication of C u 1 equal to 0. C u 1 equal to 0 means the inlet well component is 0 in case of pump and the exit well component is equal to 0 in case of turbine. And this is not necessary, but if we make this assumption the, it is going to give us a little more insight. The same is with beta 2 equal to 90 degree. We are taking a special case and in reality beta 2 need not be 90 degree, but if we do that then we find that W B L infinity is u 2 square. This has a very significant influence in the performance of the turbo machines. We will see this aspect coming again and again. So, we can say if density changes are negligible then W B L infinity is related with delta P by rho and we can say that the pressure rise of the two turbo machines let us say one handling the gas the other handling the liquid if we compare then we can say that for the same amount of pressure change in case of a gas the gas will have larger specific work because we are talking about the density of the gas being small. Okay? And then recollect the relationship we got the W B L infinity is u 2 square which is the blade peripheral velocity square. So, what does it mean if W B L infinity is high as we have just now discussed for gaseous medium uh, or turbo machines handling gaseous medium then we can say that the blade speeds will be much higher. Thus we can expect that in case of blowers or steam or gas turbines the speeds will be higher than the corresponding the hydro turbo machines like pumps or hydraulic turbines. And if the speed is high then we will have 
two options. One, in order to get u high, either I can make the RPM high or I have to make the size high. So, if we make the RPM or the rotational speed higher, then there is a problem of the permissible stress of the material. So, you see that proper choice of material is stemming from the requirement of higher speed or lower speed and the speed requirement comes from the specific work requirement related with the density. So, we have to keep this in mind while designing a turbo machine and because of these high stresses, we find that the shrouds of air compressors are usually made out of thick steel plates with increasing thickness towards the hub. But shroud in a pump is usually made of cast iron because as I told you the speeds will be very different. Next, we can discuss this U2 Cu2 minus Eu Cu1 the energy transfer in a slightly different way. This is already obtained earlier, I am just reproducing it and we write the velocity triangle a typical velocity triangle and hence I am not writing C1, U1 etcetera. I am just writing C, U, W to represent a generic velocity triangle and if you recollect we have already defined how angles beta and alpha should be defined. And now if we apply cosine rule for the velocity triangle, we get that W square equal to C square plus U square minus twice u c cos alpha and we can rewrite it in the form of w 1 square minus w 2 square. And if I write w 1 square minus w 2 square for the two sides the suction and the pressure sides, then we get that w 1 square minus w 2 square is nothing but c 1 square minus c 2 square plus u 1 square minus u 2 square minus twice u 1 c 1 cos alpha 1 plus twice u 2 c 2 cos alpha 2 and if we rewrite this we get u 2 c 2 cos alpha 2 minus u 1 c 1 cos alpha 1 is equal to c 2 square minus c 1 square plus u 2 square minus u 1 square plus please note it is not w 2 square minus w 1 square it is w 1 square minus w 2 square this is to be borne in mind that whereas, C 2 square minus C 1 square and U 2 square U minus U 1 square here it comes out to be W 1 square minus W 2 square and then whole divided by 2. So, what is my left hand expression U 2 C 2 cos alpha 2 or U 1 C 1 cos alpha 1? It is nothing but it is U 2 C U 2 minus U 1 C U 1 and hence we can write that W B L infinity is equal to C 2 square minus C 1 square plus u 2 square minus u 1 square plus w 1 square minus w 2 square whole divided by 2. And we need to understand what are the contributions of these terms 1, 2 and 3. But before we go into that, I would like to extend this discussion on energy transfer further. So, we can say that we have an impeller which we have discussed so far, you are very familiar by now about this impeller and I am taking only one blade passage just as a representative blade passage because in vane congruent flow all blade passages are identical, the flow is identical in all the vane passages and I draw it separately. And let us assume for the time being that we are talking about a pump, then what happens? The flow comes from a smaller radius here which is given as 1 the suction side and it goes out from the outer radius which is 2 the pressure side. And we can write that W prime from the first law of thermodynamics we know that W prime is equal to m dot h 0 2 minus h 0 1 and blade uh, specific quark and the specific quarks in this case will be identical because we have talked about the idealized conditions there is no loss. And so, we can write first the specific work is W prime per unit mass, unit mass flow rate which is H 0 2 minus H 0 1 and you already know that H 0 2 or H 0 1 represents the stagnation enthalpies at the stations 1 and 2 and hence we can write it as H 2 minus H 1 plus C 2 square minus C 1 square by 2. And to re reaffirm that it is no uh, idealized case with no losses. So, we can say that W is equal to W B L infinity equal to H 2 minus H 1 plus C 2 square minus C 1 square by 2. And let us now put in the expression of W B L infinity in terms of the velocities. If we do that, 
then we can write that C 2 square minus C 1 square plus U 2 square minus U 1 square plus W 1 square minus W 2 square whole divided by 2 is nothing but H 2 minus H 1 plus C 2 square minus C 1 square whole divided by 2. So, that means C 2 square minus C 1 square term gets cancelled from both sides and we are ending up with H 2 minus H 1 is nothing but U 2 square minus U 1 square plus W 1 square minus W 2 square by 2. What does it mean? It says that the change of static enthalpy can be expressed in terms of the velocity components u and w at the inlet and at the outlet and essentially the difference in their squares. So, if we now continue this discussion of instead of static enthalpy change, if we want to talk in terms of pressure. So, how do we proceed from here? We can say that for an isentropic process because we have already assumed this is an idealized case we can write that d h equal to d p by rho because we know that t d s equal to d h minus v d p and t d s is 0. So, v is nothing but the specific volume and it has been replaced by density. For an incompressible flow handling machines what we get it is density is constant and we can say that p 2 minus p 1 by rho which is nothing but the enthalpy change is equal to u 2 square minus u 1 square plus w 1 square minus w 2 square whole divided by 2. So, what we have arrived at it is that out of the three components we have written earlier for work transfer that is c 2 square minus c 1 square the first term then the other two terms are u 2 square minus u 1 square and w 1 square minus w 2 square. We find that the second and the third terms together contribute to the static pressure change and this is very important. We need to understand this portion a little more clearly. So, let us look at the term wise contribution of the first, second and third term now. And when we look at the first term it says the change of absolute kinetic energy or the dynamic head that is very clear because we are talking about C 2 square minus C 1 square. Now, you may say that W 2 square minus W 1 square is also a change of kinetic energy, but what about U 2 square minus U 1 square, but we will show you that C 2 square minus C 1 square is essentially different from W 2 square minus W 1 square even if I say that U 1 equal to U 2. Why? Because the second term that is W 1 square minus W 2 square contributes to the static pressure change or the static enthalpy change. So, let us look at the term 2 which we are talking about is the blade peripheral velocity change, but before we go into that let me digress a little bit. Let me re recall a basic studies which we do in, in fluid mechanics where we talk about a beaker which is filled with water. Let us say that this is a beaker which is filled with water up to the line shown by dashed and let us say that we are interested in knowing the pressure at two points which are at the same depth and these points are given by let us say red ball and green ball. So, when the beaker has a flat uh, free surface that is this is water above it is in air then we know the depths being same the pressures are identical. What happens when I start rotating this beaker? I rotate it about its axis and you know that the free surface will become parabolic and now you see that the mere rotation of the beaker gives rise to a pressure difference between the two points which were previously when the beaker was at rest at an identical pressure. So, what gives rise to this pressure? It is the centrifugal effects. So, now we are talking about not just a stagnant liquid, we are talking about a fluid which is flowing from one radius inside the blade impeller to another radius and we are talking about the energy change. To see it let us see that we have a flow which takes place and we have a fluid element which is at a radius r and which is having a small and rotation is omega and then we can say that the change in pressure is equal to half u 2 square minus u 1 square that is half multiplied by within bracket u 2 square minus u 1 square. 
So, this talks about the centrifugal effects. Let us pause here for a minute. I had earlier told you or just now also showed you that in case of a pump, the fluid enters at a smaller radius and exits at an outer radius which is larger. And in case of turbine, the reverse direction was shown in the last class. That time I could not explain you why we are taking this, is it just a convention or there is a flow physics. Now, you will appreciate that in case of a turbine, what are we doing? We are taking energy from the fluid and producing power. So, in case of a turbine, the u 2 which is at a higher diameter and is greater than u 1 which is at a smaller diameter. So, what happens? We are talking about a conversion. In case of a pump, the reverse happens. In case of a pump, we are talking about the pressure building. We want to raise the pressure. So, in that case, this u 2 square minus u 1 square will also be positive if the flow takes place from the inlet to the outlet. So, what happens is that by the help of the geometry and by choosing the flow direction, we are taking advantage of the blade rotations. If you look into the history of technology, you will see that earlier days the turbines were made instead of making inward flow, the turbines were also made in outward flow. But that practice has now been given up and we are now talking about an inward flow radial turbines. The third component is the change in kinetic energy due to the relative velocity and I have already shown this is equivalent to the static head or the pressure within the rotor. So, let us look at it for an axial flow machine. The reason I choose axial flow machine is because I can offset u 1 and u 2 because u 1 equal to u 2 and hence u 1 square minus u 2 square is equal to 0. So, if you recollect now the only term which contributes to the pressure change is the relative velocity. And when we talk about this axial flow machine, what we are saying that this is an axis of rotation and if you remember the cylindrical development we carried out in the last class, we took any radius r and drew the cylindrical development. Now, I am interested in what is the volume flow that is taking place in a small radius dr of the blade thickness. Let us look at the axial flow blade little more carefully. So, let us look at it. If you look at it, there is a pin which is going right through it and this is the wooden blade, a model to show you how the blades look like. This blade is twisted and hence we will tell you the why it is twisted more later on when we talk about the turbines in the case of in the next week. We will talk about the turbines, but right now let us assume this is a axial flow machine and the blade profile is shown, the blade is twisted. We cannot make the blade directly from the hub, this is the portion which is the hub to the tip. So, what we actually do is if you can visualize these lines, their lines are now made colored for ease of visualization. You can see that we are making these blades in small planes. So, we take that this is the hub radius, this is the tip radius we divide it from the hub radius to the tip radius which is called the blade height into several small strips and we make the blades in these small strips and then stack it about this stacking axis. So, now you imagine that in the diagram that I have shown, I am talking about any radius let us say this blue line and we are talking about a dr which is a small region and it is not just one blade if you remember in the diagram that we have shown in the solid model we are talking about three blades. So, we are talking about the volume of flow that is taking place inside this region. If I now look at it in the cylindrical development, but instead of a planar view we are taking a height delta r or dr, then we see the blade passage. In this case you can see that the fluid enters and leaves and this is the height dr we are talking about. So, in this case what happens u 1 equal to u 2 and hence what is left is w 1 and w 2. From the mass conservation we can say easily that the velocity at the outlet given by this arrow is more than the velocity at the inlet okay? and hence there is a change of 
w1 and w2 because this is a relative velocity and we can say that in the absence of u2 minus u1 square the any contribution from there the static pressure change or the static enthalpy change is due to the relative velocity magnitudes change okay so this also contributes to the pressure rise or the pressure fall in case of turbine now we are at a position to define these two terms called impulse and reaction but before we talk in terms of turbo machines let us talk in a simple way so that we all can have a common understanding of these terms we will say that if there is no change in static pressure across the impeller then the machine is said to be of impulse type if however there is a change in static pressure it is called a reaction type so let us take some simple examples where we can understand these concepts with the help of the fluid mechanics knowledge we have gathered so this is a plate and the flow takes place around this bent plate and leaves this entire plate is exposed to atmosphere so what happens p1 equal to p2 but because of the change in flow direction there will be a net force you know that from the conservation of angular momentum so this force that is experienced by this bent plate is because of the change in the direction of flow contrast this with a variable diameter let's say nozzle diffuser configuration in which the pressure at the inlet and outlets are different because even if i take it is an incompressible flow the velocities are different pressures are different and we get a net force coming out because of the change in pressure though the flow direction is same so what happens in the first case there is a simple change of flow direction no change in pressure in the second case there is a change in pressure but no change in flow direction and hence we will call by our definitions that the first one is an impulse type and the second one is a reaction type so in any machine in general we can have both a change of pressure as well as a change of directions and hence we can define a term called degree of reaction which relates the changes in the static pressures to the overall change or the static enthalpies to the overall stagnation enthalpies and degree of reaction can be defined in many different ways we can say that this is a ratio of energy transfer due to reaction to the total energy transfer like r equal to h2 minus h1 whole divided by ho2 minus ho1 we can also say that the ratio of static pressure change across the impeller to the stagnation pressure change in the stage we can therefore write as we have discussed so far that r is nothing but u2 square minus u1 square plus w1 square minus w2 square whole divided by w and it can be expressed in different ways for example i can replace w as u2 cu2 minus u1 cu1 and rewrite r or i can write r in terms of the velocities c1 c2 w1 w2 u1 u2 as given here in either way the definition we have assumed that a portion of it is going for the static pressure rise static enthalpy change which is in the numerator divided by the total energy transfer or the total blade specific work in this case being an ideal world so we say it is a specific work thus the turbo machines can be classified on the basis of this into impulse and reaction type turbo machines we will take some special cases we say that r equal to 0 which means there is no change of static pressure in the runner and these examples are the impulse turbines like pelton turbine or impulse steam turbine please note that when i say r equal to 0 or pressure change is not there i refer to the pressure change is not there in the runner it does not mean that pressure change cannot take place in any component of a turbo machine that is not possible okay so let us look at a section of a pelton turbine blade this will do in detail later on so right now you take it for granted that this is the blade profile how you get this blade profile what is the significance we'll talk when we discuss about pelton turbine but let us assume this the sectional view and the fluid velocity is from the left it comes it gets splitted into two halves and the flow follows this curvatures and leaves as shown so in the absence of the blade what i would have got is the flow should have gone along this straight line but now the fluid is leaving 
and at this angle, which means there is a deflection angle delta which is close to 180 degrees. In case of Pelton turbine, we will see later that it is about 165, 70, 170 degrees. Similarly, if I take a steam turbine, impulse turbine and the blade, I can show that the velocity of the incoming flow suffers a large change in direction when it leaves. Thus, in both cases, impulse turbines actually produce a large change in the direction, just like the bent plate we talked about. This is one of the features of an impulse type of machine. And we can say that since the objective of the pump or compressor to increase pressure, so impulse pump or compressor is not feasible, it is not desirable. We will not design an impulse pump or compressor. And if I take R equal to 1, then we know that lawn sprinklers is a very good example of a pure reaction machine. And they are the velocity that comes in actually makes the sprinkler to rotate and then you get water all around in your lawn. So, to summarize, we can say that Euler's energy equation is derived from the first principles here from the control volume approach following the angular momentum conservation. Different ways of expressing the terms in Euler's energy equation has been shown. We talked about changes in energy associated with relative velocity and blade peripheral velocities giving rise to the static pressure change. We have defined the degree of reaction and shown it in different forms and we have also talked about an impulse turbine. In this case, I can also say that though impulse turbine is possible and we do have examples, but impulse pump or compressor is not possible. And outflow from an impulse blade deviates by a large value from that of an incoming flow direction. While reaction turbines can be reversed to work as a pump and vice versa. That is, if you take a pump, you can make it rotate in the reverse direction, have the flow get admitted in the reverse direction, you will get a turbine. Maybe the turbine does not work as well as the pump would be, but such devices are not unheard of. In fact, there are applications called pump as turbine or PAT, which are used or proposed as low cost power generation method in remote areas. However, impulse turbine like Pelton turbine cannot be used as a pump. In the next lecture, we will talk about a very important aspect of efficiency, but before we talk about efficiency, we have to find out why do flows differ from the or deviate from the when congruent flow discussed so far. So, in the next class, we will start with the actual flows then that will lead us to efficiencies and which will be more realistic and we will later on on the next week when we talk about the pumps and turbines or when we talk about the steam and gas turbines in the final week, we will use these efficiency concepts. Thank you.